CSS grid layout uses the concept of explicit and implicit grid. This is the key concept that you need to be aware of when you're creating a grid. Otherwise, you could end up with a bunch of rows and columns that you didn't expect. The explicit grid is the grid that you defined using grid template rows and grid template columns, as well as grid template area properties. However, you still can have elements that don't fit into your explicitly defined grid. The implicit grid is automatically generated by the grid container whenever grid items are positioned outside of the explicit grid. The grid container generates implicit grid tracks by adding implicit grid lines to the grid. These lines together with the explicit grid form the implicit grid. Let's take a look at what this all means. Here I have a container that contains eight grid items. Currently, I have a display of grid assigned to the container. Now, if we go ahead into the container, and I'm going to target .c1, which is the class I have on the container, and I'm going to assign grid template columns, we'll use our repeat function, and we'll go ahead and say that we want to repeat three times 150 pixels in regards to the width of the columns. Then I'm going to use grid template rows, and we're just going to define these as being 150 pixels. Technically, I'm creating a grid that has one row and three columns. So when we refresh, you can see that my grid is generating with one row that is 150 pixels in height and three columns that are 150 pixels in width. The additional items that are part of my container are still part of the grid and their height is being determined by their content. What we have here is we have these first three items existing in the explicit grid. The additional items are going to fit in the implicit grid. If we open the developer tools and we click on layout and turn on the grid lines for our grid, you can see the actual defined sizes of our first row and three columns. The rest of the items just fit into the available space. So the grid will continue to make additional rows as needed and pass in the additional content. Those all exist in the implicit grid. As I mentioned, those implicit row lines are not as high as the explicit row line. And that's because we specifically set the row height using grid template rows. But this only applied to the rows on the explicit grid. If we want to control the height on the implicit grid and we're not sure how many items we might end up with, then we can do that using the grid auto rows property. Because we didn't do this here, the implicit row uses the track size of auto, which is always content based. Let's go ahead and let's add our grid auto rows. I'm going to specify the grid auto rows be set to 100 pixels. Now when I save and refresh, you can see that my additional items, the ones that did not explicitly fit into our grid, now are being controlled by the grid auto row property. And this is setting any implicit row that may be added based on the amount of content is going to have a height of 100 pixels. So the explicit grid uses grid template rows and grid template columns the implicit grid can use grid auto rows and grid auto columns. Let me show you what happens when we actually make the explicit and implicit rows all the same height. We can do that by simply adding the grid auto row property and setting the height. If we go back into our page and I'm just going to comment out the grid template rows of 150, I'll save and now when I refresh, you can see that all of the grid rows are 100 pixels. They technically are all implicit rows because we never defined the row, but using grid auto rows allows the height of the implicitly generated rows to be set. So far, our extra rows have been created to accommodate the extra grid items. But what if we want extra columns instead? In order to do this, we will use the grid auto flow property. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my HTML and I have another container that I've commented out. I'm going to uncomment this. I'll save my page. And if we refresh the page, you can see that I have a brand new grid appearing down here. In our CSS, we will target the C2 container. We will be using the grid auto flow property. This property will allow you to specify whether to use rows or columns for auto placed items. In other words, you can specify whether the implicit grid grows rows or grows columns. The initial value is row, so that explains why my first example added more rows rather than columns. If we prefer this to use columns, we'll use grid auto flow column. Just by adding the grid auto flow column, you can see that any extra items are now placed into an implicit column instead of a row. If we combine this with our grid template columns and grid template rows, our page will look something like this. Let me go ahead and add grid template columns. We'll explicitly define two columns that are one FR a piece. Then I'm going to use my grid template rows and we'll just define two rows. The first one will be 75 pixels and the second one can be 100 pixels. If we save our page now and refresh, you can see what happens. I end up with three columns and two rows. So the first two columns are taking on the one FR unit of measurement. My rows are 75 pixels high and 100 pixels high. The additional content is going to appear in the additional columns that have been generated. And because we never specified size, the size of these items are just going to be whatever size they need to, to accommodate the content. If we want to control the size of those implicit columns, then we use our grid auto columns. And if we set this to 20%, any implicit column will now take up 20% of the available space. If I resize my page, the values for these columns are going to grow and shrink since I am using relative values for all of my columns. Any new content will flow into columns. It is worth noting that when you use grid auto flow column, you change the actual flow of the grid items. You might now notice that instead of the grid items appearing in a left to right manner, they appear in a vertical manner. So we have one, two, three, four, and then five, six. The items will flow down into each column instead of across into each row. As you can see, understanding the implicit and explicit grid is an important concept. This way, you'll be able to manage all of the content that's part of your grid, even when you're going to end up with extra content that you might not have originally planned for.